Hey guys, my name is Philip, and this is video seven of the sawhorse build video, where we're going to be talking about assembly. The first thing that you need to do anytime you're doing a glue up is make sure that your table's clear and that you're prepared to do it. I've got my clamps off to the side and I've got my glue, my little glue stick, and I'm going to go ahead real quick and take care of my tenons. Right now, these tenons are still sharp. I'm going to go ahead and put a little chamfer on it. It doesn't have to look pretty, but the idea is to stop it from scraping the glue down out of that mortise. So a block plane makes pretty fast work out of this. You could also use a knife. And that way, you know, the theory in this is that it won't scrape the glue out of the mortise or all the way down to the bottom. It's also really important to think about the project and how you're going to actually glue it together. It's very rare that I ever have a project where I just glue the entire thing together at once. So in this case, it just makes sense. I'm going to attach the leg to the foot, clamp it up, let it dry for 30 minutes or so. And then I can go ahead and put those two assemblies together with the mid rail and the through uh, tenons with the wedges. For this glue up, I'm going to use just a regular tie bond one. That's typically the glue I go to for most projects. Um, with this type of tenon, I'm going to go ahead, since it's not a through tenon, I'm going to go ahead and put most of the glue in the mortise and then a very little amount on just the front half of the actual tenon. If you put too much on that, it's just going to pour out and make a mess. Uh, the idea is when I clamp this up, I don't have to get in and do any cleanup. You want to make sure you have a nice even coat on all the walls for this to last. And again, I'm really not putting much on her. All right. So as you can see, as soon as you add glue, things start getting a little tight. Instead of me smashing on that, I'm going to go ahead and see if I can bring it home with a clamp. I may have to get a bigger clamp. Okay, as you can see, I had to get out the big boy. Those, uh, these type clamps just don't have enough torque to bring a joint home. And th this was a little bit tighter than I thought it was going to be. Hopefully this will do the job. There it goes. You know, it just didn't take much to bring that home, but this type of clamp just, it wouldn't be able to do it. All right, so now that's home, I kind of take off a little bit of pressure and that shoulder, check both sides, looks really good. Now that these guys have sat for about an hour, I'm ready to go on and, you know, join them together with the mid rail and do the wedges. So before I did that, I went ahead and made some clamping coals. It's really important that the clamping coals are made with a mortise going all the way through. I'll put a clamp above, you know, top, top and below. And in this way, this allows me to be able to put the wedges in before this tenon uh, dries instead of doing it afterwards. So I'm going to go ahead and do one side. It's a little cumbersome. The glue only goes on the tenon, not the mortise. If you put glue in the mortise, it's just going to squeeze it out and push it out the, the face and make a big mess. So I'll be a little more liberal with the glue on this since this is the only place it gets glue. You can use a brush too if you don't like getting glue on your fingers. <laughs> Alrighty. righty. 
Make sure my face is out, top's up. I went ahead and chamfered this just simply when it goes through it's not going to split that mortise out if it's too tight. All right. Moment of truth, bring these two guys together. Maybe. <laughs> All right. Let's see. So now I should be able to put this on over it and clamp it and then put the wedges in. It's really important, you know, I'm always tempted to just let this sit down on the actual uh, tenon. You need to make sure this mortise is wider than that tenon, make sure the tenon's not hitting it. So when I put the wedges in, it doesn't stop the wedges from spreading that tenon. Too far. That looks pretty good. This one doesn't. Okay. Looks good. Got the gap, a bit of room. So the shoulders look nice, got a little bit of squeeze out. I'll deal with that in a minute. Got my wedges. I just like to put a bit of glue out on a piece of scrap ply and then that's, you know, to spread the glue on the actual wedge. It doesn't need much. The nice thing about this call, I made it, it's the exact same as this actual uh, leg. So when I did the mortise in this, when I had the router set up, I went ahead and just did these two. So that way this is gonna help guide the wedge in um, from front and back so it doesn't get crooked. Put both the wedges in and then I'm gonna bang them back and forth, back and forth. You can kind of hear, you know, it changes, the pitch changes. And that's it, all the way home. Looks good. Go ahead and take care of that glue, squeeze out. And then these guys can wait for, you know, 40 minutes, an hour or so. And then I can go ahead and chop them up flush. I find a toothbrush works really well to get rid of glue squeeze out. It really gets in there and it doesn't spread the glue around. Alrighty. That's it. Looks good. Whilst these guys were clamped up and drying, I went ahead and made the top rails. In this case, I decided to just do a simple countersink with an eighth inch clearance hole I'm just going to come down from the top and screw it down. Um, there's many options to do. In these, I decided to do an insert with a, a brass insert with a quarter 20 bolt, 
where you can take this off, flip it around and use it. So you can use both surfaces of this depending on what work you're doing. You can do the same here too. The nice thing about this is I never glue these in no matter what, because if I need to replace the tops, I can. So I'm going to go ahead and just screw these on. It's always important when you make these measurements um, for the layout of the screw, it's going to go in the center of this. Don't measure at the top because during clamp up, a lot of times these, you just don't know what's really happening at the top. So I take it from the true measurement at this rail. I've got it marked with a couple indicators and now I can just simply line up the first one, screw it down and then move this back and forth and screw that one down. <clears throat> Let's see this one. Yeah, so this I need to kind of push out a little bit. I'm going to pre drill this one too. Now I've got some saw horses. Okay, so now that I've got everything together, the last step is to cut these wedges off. This is probably one of the more satisfying parts of this entire build. Now I can, I've got a little bit of a bump there where I came up and take care of it from my block plane. All right. So these saw horses are done, ready to use. Hey guys, this has been video seven of the Sawhorse build videos. Hopefully you followed through from one to seven and made yourself some sawhorses. These sawhorses were obviously inspired by James Cronoff. If you guys want to get some plans for this, please head over to philipmortyfurniture.com where you can download some plans. Also, if you like the work we're doing and you consider or would consider supporting us, please check out Patreon. Um, if you are a patron, you get plans for free. And last, if you enjoyed the videos, please don't hesitate to hit that like and share. Um, please think about subscribing and just spreading the word. I really appreciate it. Hope these videos aren't too boring. Cheers.